This is the Kalaloo. You're looking for the young, the, young, the youngest uh, part of the Kalaloo, or the, 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 the leaves. This is what we call Kalaloo. All these is the young part. You cannot cut, cut this. This is the old, the older part. You know, all like this. Right. You could go any lower if you want. If you want longer stack, you go longer stack. You understand? If you want longer stack, you go longer stack. Yeah. You have one right across. No, one come on. You have one right there. You have one right here. You have one right here. You So you see cutting it across, eh? You could even go further, you could even go further down with it. Yeah. This one, this one all to watch, this. This, this, one, this, this as well too. You could get this. Yeah. And cut this as well. Yeah, you could cut that as well. So because you're going to have this, you could go as far down to get out the young. And you could get more than one from, from, from one route eh, because eh, they got a lot of slips who got skull as well inside of it. You know? So they go over here, so you could, you could have one here, so you could go right down, you could put this as far as back down inside it. Eh? So you have one, you have one, two, roughly, roughly about, about three of them you could get right, right, right there. Right. right. So you mean, so the rest are right, so you see? So you have this, so you could take what we take across here. Eh? And you have this one here again. Right? So this one here, this one here too. Alright, so from one route you get at least four four cockalo from it. Is there a particular month that you have to wait before you start harvesting it? Ideally it best at least a month before. At least ideally best it best a month, a month before, for a month before this will harvest. Because by the time you wouldn't make a big difference in that thing wouldn't fully develop. You understand? What is very interesting is that previously this would usually go to waste, waste in the fields and would be ploughed back into the soil. We have a market locally and also regionally for this. In fact, there are some countries asking us to send this by the container load. We are now going to utilize the services of several young persons in the community. These young persons came together, they formed themselves in a group, and they're going to go from field to field, um, speak to the different farmers, organize themselves. I can see that you can have a, a pickup going around in the community. This, what's the value for this so about well, in his, somebody posts a picture from in the state. Yes. One little kalu was about three forty-five US. In Saint Vincent and the Grenadines, you have about two leaves. We'll work about say a bundle of kalu is about say, three dollars. Three about three dollars. So, so in my hand here. In your hand, roughly here, you have roughly about ten dollars worth of kalu. Must be a little bit more than that. Right. And usually, this ten dollars. You go go to go to waste here on the ground. So, from what we are seeing here today, from just the harvesting this morning. We have close to two, three thousand dollars worth of that, color. Color, yeah. that's, that's that color, is yeah. just going to waste. And this is something that we can't continue to do here in the country. We're speaking about food and nutrition security. Because um, you have in this you have, you have a close close about ten thousand plants here. Yes. And if you're gonna get at least two color at least per, per root, you're getting at least roughly about twenty thousand pieces. And let me say two pieces of color, you would have sell two pieces at least for three dollars. You see the value yeah. that you got from, from thousands of dollars. Yeah. And we are going to make sure that well this will go to, to your pot. <laughs> Hello everyone, um, I, my name is Masin Magraham, a previous member of the Farmer Support Programme. As it came to an end, we are 
here looking for different opportunities for employment for me and my comrades. So we are here harvesting kalalu from a field from which we'd previously be going, gone to waste and turned back into material for the farmers to plant back. Organic, organic manure. But we are here now looking for sources of income to stabilize the economy and as well improve the gross domestic product of our country. Like through harvesting kalalu on a sustainable basis for exportation on a regular basis. Alright, as a young person, would you recommend other young persons like yourself to see unique opportunities like this? Yeah, I would. Yeah, it's a, it's a very great opportunity for farmers as well as everyone involved to have sustainable amounts of kalalu on the shelves, whether it be regionally or locally. We are happy for the opportunity and I would like to encourage other people to start the practice of harvesting their kalalu and not making anything go to waste for good agricultural practices. Right. And as a young person who is more in tune with technology and so on, do you think there's bits of technology you might use to make your harvesting work a bit easier and faster? Ah. Yeah, it would be nice to have cold storage like trucks ready on the road for when the kalalu has finished harvesting so it will be of the best quality. Also, we'll need many equipment for us to get this get onto the farm and off the farm as fast as possible so we can maintain freshness and quality. So yeah. We had a national consultation with farmers. We went to approximately 20 different communities speaking to the farmers in the country. And the main issue raised was the issue of the price received for produce. And uh, we established from the Ministry of Agriculture what was the cost of production. And we noted that for dashin, that dashin should not go under $1.10 per pound, $110 per sack. And I'm really happy today that in speaking to my dear brother, he noted that the, the prices since then definitely gone up and that the farmers are benefiting from this significantly. Could you tell us a bit about the prices for dashin and over the years with the prices that you're getting now for dashin when you compare it with what they got before? Well, really and truly before, the dashin prices used to reach all to 40 dollars a sack, 50 dollars a sack. You know, it's floating up and down all the time. But for the past couple of months, well, the price is up, it's like 180, 170, 200, reach the point that some people pay like two, two, two hundred and ten dollars a sack. Um, it's the first I ever see that happen really. You know, because normally when dashing alone going to Trinidad, the price, the price most of the time is like sixty and seventy dollars a sack. Only in Britain you may, you may catch the price a hundred dollars a sack. But for the past couple of months while, the price is good. And I want to explain the whole reason behind all of this. What we did over the last year is that we went out to different markets and we were able to attract different companies to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And there are several companies working with different farmers, working with different stakeholders, to the point now where we do not have enough dashin for export to meet the demands of the, the market. Um, quite naturally, when, when we look at the, the numbers, in the month of September, you would not get this price that you're getting now for dashin. I, I don't even want to say the price that, that farmers used to receive in the month of, of September um, because it's something that we'll be working really hard to change. And uh, I want to use this opportunity to, to encourage the exporters. You owe a duty of care to the farmers of St. Vincent and the Grenadines when you go out there to make sure that you get the best prices. I know that the exporters are doing a very hard job to go out there week after week. Sometimes you get spoilage. Sometimes you have a contract and the persons on the other end, they do not basically take up their part of the, the bargain. But over the last few months, definitely over the, for, for the whole year, I have witnessed that the exporters, the farmers, the Ministry of Agriculture, we are playing a very important role in ensuring that the supply chain is working. And as the farmer noted, in all of his life in producing dashin, it's the best set of prices 
that he has seen and witnessed.